there was a, a guy named John Garrow, who is a very famous uh, obesity and metabolism researcher in the UK. He lived in London, but he had a summer home in, in a village in Scotland. And every summer he'd go and spend a couple of weeks in Scotland. And this is back in the 1950s when there wasn't much money for doing research. So he would go to, to Scotland with a scale. And there were about 150 people who lived in this village. And every day, or every year, he'd set up the scale in the pub. And people come in and weigh everybody in the village. Men, women, kids, young, old. But over the course of a decade, he demonstrated that most of the population, unless they were teen, kids and teens or women uh, during pregnancy, most of them stayed remarkably weight stable from year to year. They might have been overweight or a little underweight, but they're, they're stable. And the average adult eats somewhere between three-fourths of a million and a million calories a year. And if you're, your weight is staying within a five-pound zone, you're, you're just spontaneously controlling your, your energy balance within 1%. You know, that's 99 forkfuls versus 100 forkfuls. I mean, think of it. I mean, it's very precise. What we're seeing here and what we've seen in many people who follow a ketogenic diet chronically is they may not get down to a perfect, you know, what, you know, the ideal body weight, but they achieve metabolic health and they come to a new steady state. And so we need to think of this not as a set point that owns you, but this is, uh, we hope, a new settling point, that this is what your, your body's spontaneously defended weight is when you're in a mild state of nutritional ketosis. But it's, it's really intriguing that we'll some, we think this look has all the fingerprints that we're getting into that regulatory mechanism and shifting it in a positive direction, and with that, achieving improved metabolic health. Uh, this is a, a, a basically an attempt to depict what happens when people uh, start on, who have weight to lose, who start on a ketogenic diet. If you've kind of reset their settling point, they eat to satiety. At, a, at an intake that's far less than what they're burning. And there is this slow chronic progression for most people as they lose weight. And so we're, this is kind of a, a, um, an average five foot six inch woman who started at 180 pounds. Um, I can't make kilos out of that. Uh, but you know, got down to about uh, from what, 90 kilos to 70 kilos. Um, and over time, that if we hold carbs pretty constant, maybe add back a little as they become more insulin sensitive, keep protein constant, in this case about 90 grams per day, they, that person will spontaneously, eat into society, raise their fat intake up to the point where they come to a new steady state. Now you'll notice that the calories burned we're estimating here come from 2400 down to 2000. Even with a modest reduction in energy expenditure, we reach a balance point which uh, realistically is in this range. And again, uh, here this is, represents 70% fat, about 20% carbs, and I'm sorry, 5% carbs and 15% protein. This, but this is not something we prescribe. This is the natural phenomenon for most people who, need to, who want to lose and have extra weight to lose when they go on a ketogenic diet. Most dry wines, you know, so your you know, uh, cabs, your Syrahs, your Pinot Noirs, and then uh, Chardonnay, um, Sauvignon Blanc, uh, I'm not going to say anything about New Zealand and wonderful wines, but anyway, well, white ones anyway. Most of them are fermented down to less than 2% by weight sugar. So if you have 100 cc's, that's one to two grams of carbs. So you can have two, gra two glasses of dry wine and less than five grams of carbs. So that would go in as an ounce of berry fruit. I'm sorry, yeah. That's that, yeah. The fascinating thing about ethanol, ethanol does not interfere with ketosis. Liver can handle that just fine, turns it into fat and we burn it, you know. And we, by the way, even people who drink in moderation, their liver fat levels go down markedly when they go into a ketogenic diet. In part because if my liver is making 100 grams of ketones a day, it's got to find 50 grams of fat to make that out of from, from the liver. So, the, you know, it's, it's actually a great way of getting fat out of your liver is, is letting it make ketones and secrete them into the blood. But here's the problem. Who here has had, say, three drinks before dinner and then found that they were, weren't hungry enough to eat dinner? Alcohol is remarkably non-satiating. If I had 300 grams of fat before dinner, I'd eat 300 grams less at the meal. Fat's very satiating.